You know you've done this before, and I know you've done this because you're watching this right now. And I do it myself all the time. I find YouTube videos that are related to what I'm doing, tutorials on programming or web development or native script. And if the videos are well made and explain the concepts well, then you end up sinking 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour watching these tutorials. But at that point, after you spent an hour watching, if you don't apply what you've learned right away or as you're watching it, then that video was just entertainment. And yes, we all need entertainment. And we even managed to tell ourselves that this video is educational and I'm learning and I'm becoming better a programmer. But unless you apply it, that hour you spent watching the video, that hour morphs into pure entertainment at that point, instead of having an actual transformative impact on your skills. So the longer you wait after you watch a tutorial on something new, the more that time you spent watching it becomes entertainment instead of actual learning. So I just wanted to talk to you today about three ways of getting the most out of learning via video. And that doesn't matter where you are, YouTube or some kind of video course that you're watching, this applies throughout. The first thing you should do is find structured content. What does that mean? Well, if you go looking at some tech channel that you enjoy watching, and maybe you're subscribed to, like this channel, for example, you'll see a lot of ad hoc video tutorials that have to do with one thing or another thing. For example, how to do animations or how to do one specific animation, maybe how to animate a loading spinner. How do you put that in context of what you're learning? How do you put that together with everything else that you've learned about that particular technology? It's kind of hard to do that when you're just watching an isolated video. When you have structured content, what that means is that you're watching a set of tutorials that have been designed to take you from one point to another, to another, to the next, and each time they build on top of the previous thing you learned. This is especially useful if you're new to a technology and you're just getting your feet wet in it. Maybe you've read the documentation, maybe you got started with it already, followed a tutorial on getting started, but now you're trying to take your skills to the next level and you came across a YouTube video that shows you how to do a certain thing. Well, that may or may not be helpful to you. You need a video or a video series that's gonna have enough to build on what you already know and to take you to the next steps using a certain flow. So for example, if you're learning how to build an application, you'll be able to connect those dots with the getting started material for that particular application and then take excursions on how to combine that with different software principles and how to architect the overall application in a scalable way that's gonna take you beyond just a to-do application. That's where a structured video course comes in. Once you're done with your structured content, a structured video course, whether you find it on YouTube in long form or whether you find it on some other site that specializes in video courses. In my example, I create video courses on nativescripting.com, but it doesn't matter if you're learning native script or some other technology, this applies. And after you've done that, then you can fill in the gaps in your knowledge by watching ad hoc videos and applying what you've learned in those videos to the project you're working on. The second important step you should be taking is being a monkey. A monkey? Did this guy really say you should be a monkey? Yeah, so uh, being a monkey as in performing the steps without really understanding or knowing what you're doing. So when you're watching a tutorial or a structured course, you want to follow along. You want to actually do the steps. You wanna get your fingers on the keyboard and start typing things out and getting used to the syntax. You build up muscle memory to do certain things in a certain language or a certain framework. This only works if you're practicing, if you're actually doing and following along. You don't necessarily need to understand everything in and out. That comes later. You just need to be able to get familiar with doing the stuff. Even if you see it as clear as day, what the teacher is doing, and you say to yourself, yeah, I get that. No, no, you don't get that until you actually do it. Try it. So be a monkey. Do the work. The understanding will come. And that brings me to number three. Being a monkey is good. It's good for practice. You're practicing, but you're doing it mechanically. Number three is practicing with intention. At this point, you might separate yourself from the content you've watched. You will take yourself into a focused state of mind and you will really concentrate on what you're doing 
and try to understand what you're doing. This is the point where your brain actually solidifies what it learned. You already have the muscle practice down because you've been typing along like a monkey all this time. And in this stage is where your brain builds that memory. But don't just do it. Have a specific goal that you're working towards. If you're trying to build an application, have that application or that page that you're trying to build as your final goal. Have it in mind, have it designed, and work towards that goal while you're practicing your craft. And the biggest challenge that people face with this step is being focused. It's finding the right amount of time to actually concentrate, to not be disturbed, put your phone on silent, turn off YouTube, turn off the course, and just focus on what you're doing. Now, after a while, you'll start losing focus because what you're doing is becoming automatic. And this is good in a way because you've solidified those skills that you've learned. That's good, that's progress, but you need to keep building on top of that. So you need to apply more new concepts and keep yourself focused in this practice stage as you build and learn new skills. An example of this is when you first learn to tie your shoes, if you can remember that. And if you're watching this video, you've probably learned how to do that a long time ago. When you're first learning to tie your shoes, you're very careful and you're remembering each step and you're practicing and you're carefully threading the shoelace one into another into a beautiful knot. Do you remember when you started doing that? And at which point did it become an automatic habit? Well, now your brain can do this automatically and the same thing will happen when you're learning a new programming language or a new framework. The more we repeat this task, the more mindless it becomes. So you need to be careful to be able to separate the mindless tasks, which are the monkey phase of your learning experience and the deliberate practice that you're gonna be doing in stage three, where you're learning and layering. Now this video is not one of my usual tutorials on this channel, but it still outlines a set of skills skills that you can actually learn. And in a meta kind of way, if you just watch this video and don't apply what you learned in this video, then this video was just entertainment for you. But even if it helps you think about how you approach watching tutorials, then that's already a step in the right direction. Let me know down in the comments below how you find tutorials like this and other ad hoc tutorials that you find on YouTube versus structured content. Thanks for watching and good luck on your journey.